Hello, my name is Rogers Jackson. I am the pastor of the Emmanuel Baptist Church, 8301 South Damon Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. I will be sharing with you Sunday School Reflections for Sunday, June 12, 2022. The subject of the lesson is titled, A Mission to Save. A Mission to Save. Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 13. Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 13. The lesson objectives. Teach. Understand that God's mission for the people of Israel is to show all people the way to God. Secondly, reach. Tell others about God's never-ending love and salvation for all people. The background of this lesson. The lesson for today is the second half of Isaiah's book, chapters 40 through chapter 66. This section contains messages of consolation, messages of hope, messages of deliverance, and messages of God's promise of future blessings through his servant, the Messiah. Isaiah describes the Messiah as both the suffering servant and the sovereign Lord. As the suffering servant, he would die to take away sins. As the sovereign Lord, he would set up his everlasting kingdom and rule with righteousness. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from afar. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, hath he made mention of my name. The A clause of verse 1. Listen and hear, O isles of islands, isles of coastlands, listen to me. And hearken and give heed and listen willingly, ye people from far distant places. The C clause of verse 1. The Lord, Adonai, Adonai, the Lord who is Adonai, the one who is matchless, Adonai, the one who is supreme in power, Adonai, who has called and summoned me from the womb of my mother's belly to give birth. The D clause. The Lord hath called me from the bowels of my mother's womb. Hath he, the Lord, made mention and remembered my name? 
verse 2. And he, the Lord, hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In the quiver hath he hid me. The A clause of verse 2. And he, the Lord, hath made my mouth of conversational speech a sharp sword. He made it like a sharp sword that is a knife that brings justice and peace. The B clause of verse 2. In the shadow and in the shade of the Lord's protection and refuge. To be in the protection and refuge of his hand hath he, the Lord, hid me from public notice. The C clause of verse 2. And he, the Lord, made me a polished shaft, a polished shaft of an arrow shot from a bow. The D clause. In his, the Lord's quiver, the quiver which was a container of arrows, hath he, the Lord, hid and kept from public notice. Verse 3, And he said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. The A clause of verse 3. And he, the Lord, said unto me, Thou, you, art my servant, my servant who strengthens others. You are my servant who supports and keeps things upright, O Israel. Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Israel, in whom I will be honored. In Israel will I be multiplied. Verse 4 of the passage. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. The A clause of verse 4. Then I said, I have labored. I have toiled. I have worked in vain that is empty and senseless. The B clause. I have spent an exhausted my strength of power and courage. I have spent my strength for naught and for nothing and in vain that which was useless 
and worthless. The C clause of verse 4. Let me go to the C clause of verse 4. Yet, surely my judgment, my judgment, that word judgment is mispah. Yet, surely my judgment of what is right and just is with the Lord and my work with my God. Verse 5 of the passage. And now, saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. The A clause of verse 5. And now, saith the Lord that formed and shaped me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. The B clause. Though Israel be not gathered, yet I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength and power. Verse 6 it reads, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore and preserve and restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. The A clause of verse 6. And he, the Lord, said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant my servant who strengthens, my servant who supports, and my servant who keeps things upright to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved and those who are kept safe in Israel. The B clause of verse 6. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation. I will make you a light to the Gentiles that you will be my hope and my welfare unto the end of the earth. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful, 
and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. The A clause of verse 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, who brings us back from bondage and is the Holy One to whom man despiseth with disrespect. The B clause of verse 7. To him, the Redeemer of Israel, the nation abhorreth. The nation rejects and despises to a servant of rulers. The C clause of verse 7. Kings shall see and kings shall arise to do something to prosper. The D clause of verse 7. Princes who are generous, princes who are noble, with an excellent character, also shall worship. Because of the Lord, who is supreme in power and supreme in spiritual authority, the Lord, who is faithful in our support. And he is the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose you and accept you willingly. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. The A clause of verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time that is favorable, have I heard you. The B clause of verse 8. And in a day of salvation, in a day of deliverance, have I, the Lord, helped you, aided you, and supported you. The C clause of verse 8. And I, the Lord, will preserve you revive you and flourish you and I will keep you safe. The D clause of verse 8. And I, the Lord, will give you for a covenant agreement of friendship. I will give you for a covenant of the people to establish support, to establish and nourish the earth, to cause it to inherit and possess the desolate and the ruined heritages of wealth and properties. The E clause of verse 8. And I, the Lord, 
will establish, I will support, I will sustain, I will refresh, and I will nourish the earth to cause, to inherit, and possess the desolate and ruined heritages of possessions and properties. Verse 9, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves, they shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. The eight clause of verse nine, that thou, you, Lord, may say to the prisoners who are detained in a dungeon of incarceration, B clause, go forth, stepping out to them that are in darkness. Go forth, stepping out to them who are in disorder, confusion, uncertainty, and chaos. The C clause of verse 9. Show yourselves, causing others to see you. The D clause. They who see you shall feed in the ways they shall feed in the paths where they are walking and their pastures of fertile fields shall be in the high places of the temple. Verse 10, they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. The A clause of verse 10. They shall not hunger because of a lack of food, nor shall they thirst being dried out, needing water. The B clause. Neither shall the heat nor sun smite and strike them physically. The C clause. For he, the Lord, that hath mercy and steadfast grace on them shall lead and guide them into the proper path of blessing even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Verse 11. I will make all my mountains a way and my highways shall be exalted. The A clause. And I the Lord will make all my mountains a way and a road to be traveled. The B clause of verse 11. And I, the Lord, will make all my highways and public roads shall be exalted and lifted 
up. Verse 12. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinem. The A clause of verse 12. Behold and see attentively, these shall come from far. The B clause. And lo, pay attention, observe and know this, these from the north and from the west and these from the land of Sinem that was very remote from the Holy Land going towards the east southward. Verse 13, sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and the Lord will have mercy upon his afflicted. The A clause of verse 13. Sing with celebration, O heavens, and be joyful with a jubilant delight, O earth, and break forth into singing. The B clause of verse 13. O mountain, for the Lord hath comforted, the Lord hath sustained, and the Lord has nourished his people, and will have mercy and steadfast grace upon his afflicted who are despairing in despondent situations to the point of giving up. These are a few reflective comments for our Sunday, June 12 Sunday School lesson, A Mission to Save. Let us pray. Great God, our Father, we thank you for this word that declares that regardless to the circumstances or the situations to which we find ourselves there, you're a God that will deliver. You are a God that will help us. You are a God that will bring us to it and by your grace to bring us through it. We thank you now, and we praise you for the victory. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Go forward, my friends, and serve the Lord. Praise be to God who gives us the victory. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.